this video, we are going to be discussing the regulation of gene expression. We're going to talk about promoters, enhancers, and silencers. We will go over each one of these elements, what they are, and how they play a role in gene expression. But before we begin, let's make sure we're all on the same page. So we need to be able to control how much or how little we want certain gene products. An example is, if liver cells are exposed to toxic molecules, they would want to increase their production of enzymes that can degrade these molecules. But we don't want too much energy going to make these enzymes if we aren't exposed to the toxins and if we don't need these enzymes. Therefore, it's really important that we have some sort of system to be able to regulate gene expression. Let's first talk about promoters. Promoters are a DNA sequence that can be about 100 to 1,000 base pairs long, where this is the area that RNA polymerase II in eukaryotes, as well as other general transcription factors, can bind to DNA. It's important to note that promoter binding is very different in bacteria compared to eukaryotes. For example, in bacteria, you just need the RNA polymerase as well as a sigma factor for promoter recognition and binding. On the other hand, this process in eukaryotes is much more complex and it requires a bunch of transcription factors in order for RNA polymerase II to bind to the promoter. Eukaryotes have one promoter for every gene, whereas in prokaryotes there may be one promoter for many genes. It's also important to note that promoters are rich in adenine and thymine. Let's take a look down here at adenine and thymine. So the AT bonds are easier to break than the GC bonds because there's two hydrogen bonds that connect adenine and thymine, whereas there are three hydrogen bonds that connect guanine and cytosine. So this makes sense that you want AT bonds near a region that you want to eventually break open. The promoter region also has the Tata and the Cat box where the Tata box is about 25 bases upstream and the cat box is about 70 to 80 bases upstream. So essentially what happens at the promoter is that it will just gather a bunch of transcription factors in that area and this will ultimately help RNA polymerase II to transcribe DNA into RNA. Contrast this to DNA polymerase which binds to a primer whereas RNA polymerase binds to a promoter. Something to mention is that a disease that could occur due to issues with promoters is called beta thalassemia. Beta thalassemia can occur due to mutations in promoter sequences, which decreases beta globin synthesis. You need beta globins to properly form hemoglobin, which is what your red blood cells use to help you give oxygen to the rest of your body. Without proper beta globin, and thereby hemoglobin, patients can have severe anemia and some viruses can even kill them, such as parvovirus, but we'll talk more about that in future videos. One last thing to mention about promoters is that mutations in promoters often results in a dramatic decrease in the level of gene transcription. Now let's move on to talking about enhancers. So enhancers are DNA sequences that increase the rate of transcription by binding to activator proteins. So enhancers can be close or far away from the gene that it regulates. If it's far away, what happens is the DNA, as you know, is a 3D structure and it can bend in order to bring the enhancer close by to the promoter. Enhancers are binding sites for specific transcription factors in contrast to promoters, which are binding sites for general transcription factors. Enhancers can increase transcription by enhancing the activity of RNA polymerase. I really like this image of enhancers and promoters down here. So as you can see, the activators are binding to the enhancer region. Transcription factors are also binding to the activator as well as the promoter. All of this is to help start transcription, so turning DNA into RNA. One last thing I want to talk about is an example of something that happened due to issues with enhancers and that is the drug thalidomide. So thalidomide was a drug that was used for morning sickness in pregnant women, and it caused severe birth defects. Down here, you can see these babies who were, had mothers that were taking thalidomide during their pregnancy. 
the babies have limb abnormalities. And we eventually found out that what happened was the thalidomide drug prevented proteins from binding properly to certain enhancers, and this caused these limb abnormalities seen here. Now let's quickly breeze through silencers. So silencers are essentially the opposite of enhancers. They're DNA sequences that decrease the rate of transcription by binding to a repressor protein, and they can prevent RNA polymerase from binding. Now let's do a quick summary about the super important things in this video. Promoters are DNA sequences where RNA polymerase II binds, as well as other transcriptional factors. It's rich in adenine and thymine because the AT bonds are easier to break. Enhancers increase the rate of transcription by binding to activator proteins. And silencers decrease the rate of transcription by binding to repressor proteins. And enhancers and silencers can be close or far away from the gene it regulates because DNA can bend. So that sums it up for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked the video and found it useful. If you did, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.